God, what a gift that we have in you and what a hope we have secured through your son. What a privilege it is to know him and what a joy it is to anticipate singing his praises for all of eternity. We thank you for your great grace and your tremendous love. Lord, we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. Well, this is the time in our service where we celebrate the Lord's table together, and we take a little bit of time to reflect and remember the greatness of Jesus in the gospel. Rejoicing in his work at the cross to reconcile sinners like you and me to himself. And Jesus instituted this practice with his disciples during the Passover dinner, the night that he was betrayed. And we're going to look for a moment at a passage of scripture to help direct our attention towards him and his greatness. So go ahead and turn in your Bibles to Philippians 3. And if you need a Bible, please raise your hand. And we have some men here on the sides who will make their way down and get a Bible in your hand. And you can turn to Philippians chapter 3. As you turn there, I want you to consider this. Do you have any of those over-the-top meaningful possessions? Kind of the things that you possess that are more valuable than other things, more precious, these hidden treasures within your household. Maybe it's a, a, a dish that was handed down, grandma's old dish that you only bring out under certain occasions and only you wash. Maybe it's a special piece of jewelry. Maybe it's a a special vehicle that you own, and only upon extreme inspection of cleanliness is one allowed to enter this vehicle. Maybe it's one of those really expensive toys that you got your children, and after telling them that they need to be prepared to be hospitable with all their possessions, you find it and hide it in your bedroom so that it doesn't get broken. Whatever it is, it seems that we all have or can relate to these kinds of possessions, these priceless, irreplaceable things. These things that are like a treasure hidden in a field which a man found and hid again and from joy over it goes and sells all that he has to buy that field. But actually, there's only one treasure like that treasure. Even though we might feel these other things are important to us and near and dear, there's only one truly priceless treasure that we can possess. And the reality is, is that if you're a Christian, you actually possess this treasure. You have this treasure. And this is no surprise to you. One of the things that I love most about this church, one of the things that I love most about you, is your unwavering love for and commitment to Christ. As your treasure, as your supreme treasure. And what I want to do this morning as we prepare to take the Lord's table is just remind us yet again of the infinite value of Christ. So look with me at just a couple of verses and look at what Paul has to say about Jesus. Philippians 3, verses 7 and 8. He says this, Starting in verse 7, but whatever things were gained to me, those things I have counted as loss for the sake of Christ. More than that, I count all things to be lost in view of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and count them but rubbish, that I might gain Christ. Look again at verse 7. Paul says, Whatever was gained to me, those things I have counted as lost for the sake of Christ. Paul here uses accounting terminology. He says, Whatever was good to me, whatever was positive, whatever I once thought was a profit, all of those I now count as nothing, they actually now are a loss. And more than that, I count all things to be lost in view of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. All things are lost. Riches, esteem, fame, health, physical comfort, possessions, relationships, all things lost compared 
to knowing Christ Jesus. Paul desires to gain Christ, and a valuing of anything other than Christ competes with that. A a valuing, a a raising, an, an esteeming of anything other than Christ competes with Christ himself. He must be all. All things for Paul are lost if they do not aid, assist, help, cultivate, or enable a knowing of Christ more. This is a helpful reminder for us. It has been said that if you do not crown Jesus as Lord of all, you do not crown him Lord at all. Jesus must have first place in our hearts, supreme place. Not one among many, but the supreme one in our lives, the supreme treasure of our lives. And listen, remembering this truth and living this truth is actually very hard to do. It's easy to say these things and to go, oh, yes, that's exactly right. But it's hard when the rubber meets the road. It's hard because those other things lie. They have false promises, false hopes, false comforts. If I just had this thing, I'd be happy. If my bank account just had this much money, I'd be happy. If I just had this house, I'd be happy. If I just had this relationship, this health report, this job, this grade, this husband, this wife, this child, fill in the blank. And yet the the happiness that those things promise is, is false, temporal, and shallow compared to knowing Christ. Ultimately, all we need is Christ. He is the infinite treasure. And one day, of the hardest earthly circumstances on this earth, yet knowing Christ as Lord and Savior, being forgiven of our sins and being given a righteousness that is not our own is infinitely better than a lifetime of the best that this world has to offer apart from Christ. The divide between Jesus and everything else is infinite. And so this morning, as we remember Jesus' death and we remember his resurrection, let us do so with grateful hearts. Again, I love how this body clings to these truths, reminds me of these truths, and lives these truths. And let us yet again remember and cling to and love and rejoice in these truths together. Let us have grateful hearts as through Jesus' death and resurrection, we have obtained the greatest treasure one could ever possess, and that is Jesus himself. We know him. We know him. And of course, this doesn't mean things are easy. The reality is circumstances are hard. Sorrow is real. And yet in them, Jesus is present and near and cares for us and casts a shadow of hope and peace this world and all of its trials can't touch what a gift you christian believer in jesus you are found having a righteousness not of your own because of jesus because he the perfect holy one who knew no sin became sin on your behalf. You have the joy and the privilege and the blessing of knowing Jesus and pursuing him because he went to the cross and was beaten and crushed. And we're going to take bread in a moment and we're going to crush it in our teeth. And that is to be a symbol, a remembrance for us of what Jesus did on our behalf. And we're going to take a cup of juice, and that cup of juice is a symbol, likewise, of his blood that was shed so that we might experience the forgiveness of sins. This is a wonderful time for us to remember what our Savior has done, to remember that we were bought with a price, to remember this incomparable treasure who is Jesus. And so, believer, take some time and remember Jesus. Remember the treasure that he is. 
and where there's known sin in your life, this is a great time to begin the process of repentance if you haven't already, and to remember that whatever sin is competing with your affections, it has no place and no value in comparison with Christ. If you do not believe in Christ as your Lord and Savior, then we would ask that you would repent and believe a treasure is before you. Don't run away from it. Cling to him, turn to him, and faith and repentance is the only means of forgiveness of sins that you desperately need before a holy God. And if you would do that, we'd ask, go ahead and take with us, take the bread and the cup and remember Jesus' body. And yet, if you would not, then we ask that you let the, the trays just pass by. As this is a time for believers to remember these wonderful things about Jesus and who he is and the treasure that he is for us. Men, come and serve us. When your heart is prepared, go ahead and take the bread and the cup and we will pray together in just a few moments.